Rusty Quill Presents Chapter and Multiverse Welcome back, my friend. It's always a delight to see you, of course. Your usual seat is ready for you. And I haven't forgotten that you wanted to hear more about our young superheroes, either. Last we saw them, they had made their way into the Castle Hill Mall to try and rescue some hostages from the clutches of the Green Needle and his poorly equipped minions. Just a few more lackeys stood between them and their goal. Hello and welcome to Chapter and Multiverse, the actual play podcast where we explore the same city across multiple parallel universes. I am your game master, Maddie Searle. My pronouns are she, her. And today we are continuing our campaign of Masks, A New Generation, which is designed by Brendan Conway and allows players to take on the role of young superheroes. But before we go any further, I must introduce our wonderful and talented players. Could you please let me know your name and pronouns and your character's name and pronouns, starting with Pip. Hi there. I'm Pip Gladwin, and I will be playing today uh, Joseph Teller, a.k.a. Zenith, uh, and uh, we are both he, him. Sweet. And Lori. Hello, I am Lori Ann Davis, she, her, and I am playing Bladeweth Morgan, goes by Morgan, whose superhero name is Siphon, also she, her. Sweet. And Ahmed. Hi, I'm Ahmed Al-Jabri, and I'm stoked to be here. I'll be playing Adib bin Yaslam, a.k.a. The Turban. Pronouns he, him. Sweet. And Lydia. Hi, Lydia Nicholas, she, they, and I am playing Minnie Smithson, a totally human person that just happens to have the hero name Solatrix, like, but no reason because they're like a normal human. That's fine. (laughs) Yeah. All right. And so the last time we left our heroes, they were attempting to rescue five hostages from a VHM entertainment store at the Castle Hill Mall. These hostages had been taken by the Green Needles minions, uh, cactus-themed superhero, and the minions dress in haphazard green outfits and have unconventional weapons at their disposal. You managed to take down six of the minions who stood between you and the entertainment store, but three minions who guard the hostages remain inside the store. And also... Uh, Joseph has just disappeared into the ceiling uh, in a a cloud of smoke from the newly acquired smoke bombs, uh, leaving Adib, Minnie and Morgan on the first floor balcony. So as we begin, I think the minions are remaining inside the store to guard the hostages, but Joseph is in the ceiling and you're all poised to continue your campaign. So what do you want to do? Do the minions in the store know that we're here? We've been pretty loud. Yes, they will have seen the they'll have seen their friends run away and then not come back. <laughs> yeah, standard guard procedure, isn't it? So there's two no, three minions. We can see three minions in the store and they are yes. aware of us. Yes. Um there is to be to be detailed about it, there's a woman with a meat cleaver. Oh no! <laughs> and there's a woman with um, darts from a dartboard that oh. she has like put poison on. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a man with a spade. I mean, he's just digging. He's just <laughs> yeah, he's just fine. He's digging it. Just, oh my gosh! Not terrifying at all. Oh, they've got it. She's got a meat cleaver. <laughs> I don't want to run at that. <laughs> <laughs> and I have threads. It's gonna slash through. That's it. gonna slice right through your your ribbon. So, oh no. <laughs> okay, what I want to do is. Keep them distracted while Zenith do his thing, because I've seen Zenith do, mm. like, he, he's very clever finding things to do. So I'm just buy, gonna buy him time. What can I do with that? So I guess directly engage? Yeah, feel free. Can I, can I ask, would, would you say that to us? Would you tell us that that is your plan? Yes, I would look at you and say, Zenith is coming up with something, so let's keep them distracted. Good plan. Piling the pressure on him. (laughs) Minnie's going to try and do something with the light going through the the shop window to dazzle the... I'm going to make it a cool prism somehow because physics. 
Uh, and like essentially, you know, when light goes through a sun catcher and makes the fancy reflective things, Minnie's going to do something which is totally human and not uh, a spec markalon thing. Uh, and Lydia, it's, it's episode five. Yeah. Lydia, it's okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, <laughs> Minnie's got an arc, and that arc is not <laughs> resolved. Minnie's totally human. Uh, Joseph shouts through the veil. Yeah, Minnie! <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that's that's the attempt. So that's an unleash your powers, I think, um, to try and just yes. make, essentially, the light go through the window and essentially look like a kind of jazzy disco ball. We're having hostages, and there's moving, glittery, colorful lights everywhere. It's a party. Nice. Yeah, please give me a roll plus freak. So that is an eight. So you have done it, but you either have to mark a condition or uh, tell me how the condition is unstable or temporary. Probably going to be temporary or unstable. And I will say that that Minnie has to put loads of concentration into it. So, like, it's that... You know, in a Marvel film where they're like, oh, I gotta hold it much longer. And it's like, I don't understand (laughs) what ways your powers are or are not strong. Why is this not all working? There's just nothing has been established. But in this case, can't hold it much longer. So like, uh, if her concentration is interrupted in any way, it's going to immediately collapse. Fair. Yeah, that makes total sense. (laughs) But there's like a twinkly disco ball. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's such such intense effort. It just looks really cool and rad. (laughs) Just to check, so are they blinded then? They're very distracted. (laughs) It's pretty. It's like trying to see or do anything in like a roller disco i assume there's music playing in the store like, <laughs> yeah we are oh god my brain has been playing rickroll yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Just go there. and now it's playing in all our heads yes. thank you yes That's, yeah. it's such a shame that we can't, we can't get the that. rights to we don't need to it lives in all of our hearts yeah. yeah. Now does. everyone listening to this is also singing. We've rickrolled everyone <laughs> listening to this. <laughs> but that is actually the perfect kind of with the lights. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. Adib and Morgan, this is your chance to strike if you want to. What do you want to do? So I will try to engage, hoping to create an opportunity to either Zenith or Morgan. I got the... Uh, uh, ten. Ten, perfect. That is a full success. Uh, you get to um, create an opportunity for your allies and possibly one of the other benefits, but you also get to just take a good old-fashioned hit at one of them. Okay, so I will create an opportunity to either of them just to go in and take the uh, the sharp... What was, what was it? A machete or a knife? A meat cleaver. <laughs> a meat cleaver. Okay, and I will take the meat cleaver from the <laughs> Oh, nice. Be careful with that. It's very sharp. <laughs> <laughs> and, then I, and then I throw it on the ground. And she's like, oh, <laughs> that's so mean. Um, so are you standing outside the shop and like sending your ribbons inside? Or have you entered the shop at this point? I am right in front of the door from the outside. Because I, I can reach. Yeah, nice. Sweet. Okay, yeah. Morgan and uh, Zenith, what are your plans at this point? Morgan's turn. I'm in the vents. If it's me, I'm, I'm basically trying to get like above these guys that's my objective i would like i would like to be above them if possible for sure and maybe do do a little assess on these guys now that if if i can get above them obviously yes i'm going to say that with your a highly trained senses and b whatever gadgets you have at your disposal you can probably hear below you where the the most people are oh perfect and position yourself and yeah absolutely you can assess the situation oh boy that's 14 Woo! whoa Woo! Another six and a five plus three. killing it not killing it we're Amazing. not that kind of super no. hero yet we're the you know not not killing yeah good <laughs> sweet so yeah you can ask two questions and i think you have an ability where you can ask another one as I get, well i get three <laughs> fantastic and feel free to ask not on the list as well if you want obviously which one of the three because i think there's three that are still up is most vulnerable to me right now the one who has the darts is the least strong of those three okay she's more of a stealthy kind of agile person who 
would not stand up in a hand-to-hand fight. Fantastic. My favourite people. Mm-hmm. How could we best end this quickly, I think, is my second question. And I do, I think, I think at this moment, Joseph is, having seen these guys, like, deal with some of the, 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 the people outside, like, I think Joseph is thinking that as a, as, as a we in this moment. It's like, okay, what could the others do? Because we are still, like, all linked up communicator-wise, so... I, if there's anything that gives me like oh is there something that you know one of the others could to do to help end this quickly not just me I did create an opportunity which no one has used. that is true you would be aware that they are distracted you can probably hear them being like what is this disco going on <laughs> <laughs> oh I've been rickrolled <laughs> give me my knife back and finally what can I use in the sort of the, 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 the surroundings of you know these three minions, the hostages, and and my teammates. I know, what can I use to my advantage? I would say that there are tall kind of cases of DVDs and electronic equipment that if you tip them over, you could potentially, like, crush them or, like, trap them under under a shelf. All right, fantastic. They're quite hefty metal metal things. Cool. Okay. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to just kick downwards and I think sort of kick the bot like the, the floor out from underneath me in this event and uh, what I would like to do is drop and uh, well you know what let's roll it and see what happens powerful legs yeah uh, but I think I think I'm directly engaging a threat Joseph's Sweet. been yeah. squatting <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of twerk training building up those Absolutely. core muscles just, just constantly since I was a child. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, Quilla put on those jazzercise videos for you. Yep, yep, yep. That is a five. Shouldn't have skipped leg day. I did. Presumably, you just kind of land right in the middle of these. Yeah, I think minions. I think I've missed. Even though I was successful on my uh, sort of assessment of the situation, I think I've miscalculated where I've landed. Yeah, I've just landed in the middle of them. I was going to try and do something cool, but it didn't work. And so I think at this point, in my infinite wisdom as the GM, I'm going to ask Joseph to take a powerful blow. Oh yeah. Uh, am I being oh, hit with no. a dart or a shovel? <laughs> I think the the man with the shovel is just like, Ugh! and it. <laughs> it's, it's like when when you unexpectedly see a spider or something, it's just like, <laughs> go away. <Fuck. laughs> Can I just point out that that uh, in this um, music store that has suddenly become a disco, playing a song we do not have the license for, <laughs> a ninja who looks like a guy out of Daft Punk has just landed. <laughs> So the, there's all the lights kind of reflecting off. It's a good Joseph's time. It's a good, get time. It's a good time. We should get this because we're creating a great music video right now. Yeah, we are. Oh yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, you need take... to create a sizzle reel for this. So when I take a powerful blow, roll plus conditions marked. I don't have any conditions marked right now. There we go. That is an eight. An eight. So you choose one of the list for seven to nine. Uh, I give ground. Oh, my opposition gets an opportunity against me. I think is the best one there. Like I've landed right in front of them and left myself completely open. This was a this was a rookie move. Can I jump in and defend? That makes sense. Yeah. Feel free to roll to defend plus savior. So that's a six. I think it just doesn't work, unfortunately. What does it look like as you as you attempt? So I jump inside and try to uh, take my red shawl and just to help uh, protect everyone and then I just trip with all the furniture <laughs> slide on a CD <laughs> slide on a CD so Morgan is as uh, established very amped up is not going to be thinking very advancedly <laughs> uh, it's just gonna hurl herself at I guess the spade guy if the spade guy is attacking Zenith that's who she's going to basically rugby tackle him into one of the DVD shelves. Nice. So I guess that's directly engage a threat. That's as direct as you can get, really, isn't it? Yeah, go for it. So that's an eight total. Ooh. Nice. So um, you hit and you get to take one of the advantages if you so desire. I think I would like to impress, surprise or frighten the opposition because I am very strong. I probably hurt him quite a lot, actually, because I am 
by rugby tackling him into oh such a Welsh takedown as well that wasn't on purpose <laughs> <laughs> um, rugby into one of the DVD shells and like I'm just going to take out this huge metal shelf I've probably got my arm around his back so he I don't break his back but so it's my shoulder going into the shelf and I just knock it down and the stacks just go down like darkness so they are terrified because I'm very strong and all of the Falling down is all on the beats to the music. Absolutely, and, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, this is an Edgar Wright sequence. DVDs are coming out of the the cases and like all the light that Minnie's creating is reflecting <laughs> yeah. off the the backs of the DVDs. Oh. It's Incredible. very impressive. That's a that's a really that's a really nice. Like, I'm sorry, I'm just I'm just I'm just fanboying out. But like that's a really nice acknowledgement of Morgan's training. Yeah. Of just like oh. you are you are super you are super strong. If you tackle somebody into a wall, you will break their back. Yeah. So you put your own arm in the way. That's true. And like, you know, brace. That's just super cool. That's love. Yeah, there we are. That's nice. Because she has trained a fair amount about around strength. So, yes. Yay. Is your intention to just kind of push the man of the spade out of the way? Or is, or is you, are you trying to knock him out as, as part of this? My intention, I didn't think beyond get him away from Zenith. Um, if I've impressed, surprised or frightened him... If an, an outcome of that could be he is now too afraid or knocked out if you want or just too afraid to rejoin the fight, maybe he could run away. Oh, yeah, I think absolutely. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think he just kind of clutches his spade to his <laughs> chest and is just sort of like, Ooh. I'm going back to digging and, and planting cacti. I don't want to be a cacti yeah. minion anymore. Just sort of goes off to cower in a corner. <laughs> All right, so we've still got um, Meat Cleaver Woman and we've got Dart Woman. Oh, Meat Cleaver Less Woman now, <laughs> thanks to... Yeah, Meat Cleaver Less Woman <laughs> is going to try and make a run for Adib and is going to <gasps> do a punch, just do an old-fashioned punch. It worked for Minnie. Yeah, so can Adib take a powerful blow for me, please? So on a miss, you stand strong. This is one one of the cases where rolling low is good. Yay! <laughs> but you do you still get to mark potential. Yeah, you still get to mark potential. And so yeah, do you do you completely dodge it or do you just take it on the chin and just weather it? How do you deal with this? Uh, my red shawl is just gonna be in between us, and she's gonna be hitting on the like this fabric just standing between us. Such a lovely visual that delights yeah. me so much. Yeah, yeah. She's just gonna punch some fabric. <laughs> Amazing. So yes, any one of you can take this opportunity to do something if you want to. I mean, to. Minnie's still... <laughs> There's the like strange... You're beginning to kind of hear and see strange echoes of like a world that you have never visited. Uh, through the through the disco lights, but you know it's you're just you're you're not concentrating on 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 that, so that's that's fine. You know, amidst the rick rolling, there's just like unearthly voices oh. uh, beginning to to leak through because you know she's <laughs> focusing on sparkles so hard. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> if no one else is going again, Morgan completely amped up is just going to turn and just fix a stare on Dart Woman, and is going to run directly at her cool do the same basically great yeah plus danger for that please oh 12 good night dart woman (laughs) spicy yeah (laughs) what do you do what does this look like well i guess she has projectile poison tipped darts so i guess one of the things i do is resist and avoid her blows because presumably she's throwing darts at me (laughs) as i run to Mm -hmm. her yeah Maybe someone can now get to the hostages because they're all of the minions are now down or engaged. No, yeah, that makes absolute sense. I feel like, yeah, she will have been standing in the way of one of the aisles, which is between you and the hostages. So that opens up the opportunity for you to kind of get to them, and make sure they're okay. So, what does it look like as you? Is this another rugby tackle? It's another rugby tackle for sure. Just throwing my body at people right now. That's all Morgan <laughs> is really. That's the level she's operating at. I'm imagining like she's putting her hands in front of her face as she's running towards the darts oh! just to shield herself from them. And once she's there, she just opens up and... <laughs> A big, so like kind of like the, the cross hands, like yeah. one woman. Oh, is it too late to retcon that she has like, what do you call those? Like wrist... Bracers? I love it. Yeah, she's got braces on. Yeah. Yeah. And as as Ahmed said, big bear hug, take her down. Nice. <laughs> Perfect. Do you want to crash her into another set of shelves or do you want to just, just onto the ground? Through the window. <gasps> yeah. 
Just amazing, yeah, through the window, crash of glass, shards flying everywhere. Yeah, this woman is now completely incapacitated, and the only one left is meat cleaverless woman. <laughs> All right, can I uh, just fight back? She's punching my uh, shawl. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's like it's like bullfighting, Spanish bullfighting happening right now. <laughs> so that's a uh, ten. Amazing. So I will. I want to take her out. So I will just uh, while she's busy punching my uh, uh, my red shawl, my uh, white ribbons just sneak around her and just start wrapping <laughs> her mommy mode until she <laughs> she's stuck between the wraps and falls down. <laughs> Incredible. Yes. Yeah. So she's just like punch, 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 punch. Well, that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, that's good. That's Superhero good punch. I have warned you. I am mm. planning these things. <laughs> I delight it. Excellent. Yes. So now you are free to go and check on the hostages, make sure they're okay, get them to safety. But before we do that, let's just take a very short break. And we're back. So you have successfully taken out all the minions on the first floor British style of this mall. You can now find the hostages kind of carrying in a corner of this entertainment store. You can see that there is a a pair of middle-aged men and a teenage kid with them. Looks like they're a family. And there is also a 20-something woman with chunky headphones and someone in a uniform that looks like it's the it's the uniform of the store itself. So it's kind of got a little VHM logo on it. There's just these, these five people just sort of cuddled in a little corner. What would you like to do? Well, Minnie's still going, because uh, uh, she's concentrating so hard that she hasn't realised that everyone's uh, left. So you, you might want to tap her on the shoulder. I mean- Morg is going to be like, Minnie! Minnie! Ah! Min- you can stop, Minnie! Ah, disco ends. Ah, it's, a... it's remarkably grey now. The music gets quieter, <laughs> weirdly. Yeah. <laughs> Zenith's going to gonna pick himself up off the floor um, and is just seething underneath his mask, knowing that Aquila was watching that whole thing through oh. his through his, his helmet and... Oh. Just like yeah. Yeah. Not not doing good. Not doing good. That was that was a poor showing. Oh my gosh, oh. nobody wants to hug him so much. It'll be okay, <laughs> darling. <laughs> but like there's just the daft punk face, you know? Or not daft punk, I know you update the helmet. Again, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Less uh, daft punk now after Morgan commented that the helmet yeah. looked like a daft punk helmet. Yeah. It's it's now just I don't know. Deft punk. I don't, I don't like knock off. <laughs> I um, love that. But we, we can't see the seething. No, nope. no. Nope. So we, well, at least Minnie still thinks you're very cool. Well, you were too busy making a disco to see me fall out of the ceiling <laughs> and disco! get hit with a shovel. So. With the power of <laughs> disco! Minnie might be like, oh, okay, uh, and run over and be like, want to comfort the hostages? Oh, I'm. Uh, that must have been so distracting. Uh, uh, you are. I are you okay? Uh, this um, is this your home? Uh, do, did they invade your uh, house? Uh, can I get you some tea? Uh, or or possibly a co- a coffee? Um, or a snack? Uh, or a present? That's a long list. <laughs> I think the the little teenage kid is like, this isn't this isn't our house. This is a shop. Okay. Minnie gets out her notepad. So what happened? Uh, can can we help you get? Uh, do you need tea or or a present? Well, I, my 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 dads were gonna buy me like a, a special Minecraft controller. So if you could get me that, that would be amazing. <laughs> Great. Uh, Minnie looks around and picks up an empty case. What does it look like? <laughs> it's, you know, a game controller? Uh-huh. No. Okay. And then he just gets up and, like, goes and grabs one off a shelf and is like, I guess this is mine now. <laughs> oh, that, no, that, that I think would be looting. I'll go, um, and buy it. Minnie goes and queues up at the empty, <laughs> the empty desk. The one who is uh, an employee looks from side to side and then slowly and awkwardly like goes towards the 
the cash desk. It's like, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to be doing this, but sure. Yeah, um, 40 pounds, please. Minnie takes out a <laughs> card uh, because she does operate in the world. Uh, and it's quite easy when you manipulate light and uh, matter as, say, her boss, Benson McDykel, does at a much better more superior level than Minnie does to just like maybe change some signals in a database and then the numbers change in mm. the bank account uh, so yes uh, Minnie without much understanding kind of taps on it and buys a special thank you I hope you have a really good day to the salesperson just, did you just give yourself infinite money <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm, I'll allow it. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the sort of thing where she doesn't always remember how to pay, uh, so it doesn't solve all the problems. So, yeah. I, Fair. Yeah, while this abject insanity is happening. <laughs> um, it's not insanity. Uh, it's, it's very normal. What would you do to comfort well, a child? Minecraft. <laughs> and other other block games are available. <laughs> so is going to try and shake off the embarrassment we got some concept of the layout earlier, didn't we? And we know where the Green Needle is, and we knew where his minions were, at least some of them were here. I'm thinking about the best route out for the hostages. And then we're a floor up, right? We're one floor up? Yeah, you're a floor up. There are definitely going to be minions on the ground floor. Right. And so you think that probably going back to where you started from with mm -hmm. the office spaces, there are probably going to be stairs down out of a fire exit into that same alleyway. You think that's probably the best way to get them out. Great. Okay. While I'm doing that, yeah, what are Adib and Morgan doing? Morgan is too afraid to approach the hostages and she's a bit jittery because she's still, like, I think she's probably coming down a bit from all the powers she absorbed, but she's afraid she'll hurt them, basically, because she doesn't know how strong she is really right now. So it's a bit of a, you know, untested taking power from humans and, or not often tested taking powers from humans. And there's always that element of where in my strength am I right now? So she's just going to even maybe not even back in the store, kind of thinking maybe the best place for her to be is on the outside, aware that there are still bad people around, kind of keeping an eye out. Well done, her. Proud of her. <laughs> um, what's a deep doing? I am pulling out my first aid kit and just checking if anyone needs some help. Oh. So much more practical than yep. anyone. <laughs> yep. I'm really good with the mundane. Yay. <laughs> cool. The young woman with the with the chunky headphones has a few scrapes from where she like fell onto her knees and was like um her jeans are all messed up, so you managed to clean that up, get a couple of bandages on there. There's nothing more major than a few scrapes and bruises, but just the the fact of you being there seems to make people feel comforted. We should get them out before we head upstairs. Yeah. How? Back the way we came. Yes, yeah, good idea. Do you want to lead them and I'll take up the rear? Is that is that a thing? And I can make sure no one attacks us from behind? Yeah, sure. Okay. Minnie's going to try again at that reflecting light thing so that we're kind of weirdly, despite walking through the middle of the foyer kind of thing to get back, we're in shadow. Like, mm. even though there's direct sunlight streaming from above. Nice. Under the cover of uh, Minnie's darkness, you manage to get back into the office space, the corridors, and you follow the very handy fire exit signs. Well, unsightly are actually useful in this case. <laughs> uh, and you manage to get them out from the fire exit into the alleyway where you first arrived. And the place is surrounded, isn't it? So yeah. they'll just be running straight out into, you know, help basically yes right. yeah the yeah the the police are are surrounding it making sure no one goes in there's press everywhere mini shouts after enjoy your roblox <laughs> <laughs> the kid just kind of looks at you with a sort of confused but sort of affectionate way and just like thanks lego is the best <laughs> you just said two different things and then just runs away <laughs> are they synonyms Seven things that aren't Lego. <laughs> One that you wouldn't believe. Yeah. 
Uh, we, so we sort of head back inside, I guess, back to where we got to. If part of our mission is to stop the cactus man, yes, I suppose. I mean, were, were those the only hostages I mean, that we know of? Yeah, those are the only hostages that you know of. Your main objective is complete. You have got the hostages to safety. You can see that they are being kind of given those shock blankets by the police off in the distance and being popped in the back of police cars and ambulances. Yeah, so while the hostages are, are sort of heading out and being ushered out of the fire escape and, and towards the, the waiting authorities, I am going to send a message to uh, Aquila. Do we engage the main threat? If there's a supervillain, you take them down. Understood. Um, I'm heading back in. Okay. Cactus man. He's on the second floor, right? Yep. Second floor up. Okay. You all in? Yeah. Yep. Morgan is very noticeably, like, not getting too close to any of you right now. Cool. All right. So, yes, you can make your way up through the office space area of the mall, find some stairs that lead up to the second floor, and find a similarly bland corridor from which you can look out and see another U-shaped balcony. In the centre of the U this time, you can see that the Green Needle himself and three other minions are smashing glass cases and just taking bracelets, necklaces, watches, anything of value that they can from this jewellery store. And the Green Needle himself is in this very tight-fitting green suit with sort of 3D yellow spikes and clearly he thinks it looks so cool but it inevitably brings to mind sort of children's party type outfit (laughs) or like children's TV. Does it sag in occasional places like it's just clearly a bit baggy around the knees and and so the things wobble around. Yeah some (laughs) some of the spikes just sort of droop a bit like they're not they're not fully we, stuffed. I would love to make a bit read the files roll on this guy. For sure. Uh, if there yeah. even is a file on this guy. <laughs> um, it's a sticky note. <laughs> oh, it's not a good roll. I have made it to a seven. Nice. So what do you want to get out of that? So on a hit, I just uh, I tell the team one important detail that I've learned from my studies about this guy. I think from Zenith's studies about the about the, the, the superhuman community that he has been, you know, doing for, for quite a long time, the, the Green Needle doesn't come up a lot. Uh, uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Maddie, but I'm not getting the vibe that this guy is a particularly dangerous or, or like, notorious supervillain. Yeah, definitely not prolific or well-regarded in any sense. <laughs> I think the thing that Zenith gets is like in all the re- all, all the sort of reports about his fairly unsuccessful or at least low level crimes that that he's committed um are that he is like susceptible to provocation of of various of various kind like any anything said against like him his costume his whole deal <laughs> like he's very You're saying he's a bit prickly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's not great at um, keeping it together, if that makes sense. If any of you could provoke him or yes. Um, yes. keep him off balance emotionally. I have a great idea. Great. I'm pretty sure I have a good chance of tripping him off, but I don't know what to do next. <laughs> so I, I've been thinking about picking a fight with him. You know, textiles, pins and needles. There is some natural chemistry going on here. So... I want to piss him off, but I don't know what to do after that. <laughs> if he's angry, then he's stupid. We can take advantage of that. Yeah, I could just punch him. <laughs> yeah, or um, I could. The, your punch was great, Minnie. Your punch, actually, Minnie, great punch earlier. Sorry, now's not the I time. I mean, your punches were really cool as Thanks. well. Excellent punches. I think I actually missed with the only High punch. five? Um, Morgan will just put her hand static and not put any pressure behind it. <laughs> right. Uh, like Minnie will slap the hands very briefly. Go team. Go team. Okay. So GM, first I'm gonna uh, use my mask move, mm-hmm. which allows me to switch from uh, mundane to another uh, label. So I get plus three on that. Great. Okay. Mm. So for me to do that, I'm gonna wrap my uh, turban. It's a blue one, so I'm gonna change the color to make it darker blue and wrap it around my face so only my eyes are seen. So I'm mimicking the style of uh, uh, North African Amazigh uh, turbans. 
I love it because it just makes me feel like superior. <laughs> like I'm strong, <laughs> I can do this. Nothing can get me. Nothing, even not the desert, even can hit me. So I I get into this mentality before I start provoking him. Amazing, cool. fantastic. Feel free to do a provoke roll for sure. Go for it. Yeah, I'm gonna go out in the hallway. So I'm just gonna yell at him. You know, just come come pick a fight with me. Plus three, that's a ten. Woo! He will rise to the bait and do what you want. So what do you, what do you say to him? All right, I'm gonna yell <laughs> as loud as I can. Hey, pink cushion! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I think you lost your way. <laughs> the arson craft is in, on the first floor. <laughs> Ooh! Oh, damn. Burn! Oh, damn. Are you just trying to get him distracted and up in your grill? or I'm, um... I'm uh, just pulling him just to come down to us, like getting angry and just come right at us as stupidly as possible. But mate, if you can make him feel insecure, that is a condition marked. <laughs> so like, just keep mocking his craft skills. That's how we'll win this. Yeah, I just want him to jump in, getting angry, not notice his surroundings. So that would give... Uh, support and advantage to everyone around me amazing yes he's gonna turn and look at you and just storm forward and be like what are you saying about me where did you come from what the heck is this why are you what just come on like if you want to do if you want to come at me come at me <laughs> give it a go if you think you're hard enough <laughs> hey if you're sharp enough come down and face me nice. <laughs> just absolutely fuming morgan is going to see this as opportunity to maybe try and tackle him from the side uh, but we'll also try and provoke him Morgan is not good at this kind of thing <laughs> so Morgan is going to run at him and shouting ah, I've got loads of cacti and that's not even what one looks like <laughs> <laughs> oh. incredible nice I've got minus one superior so <laughs> give it a go Oh my gosh, the dice no. So I got five minus one, that's four. Uh oh. <laughs> the green needle is so focused on Adib and so up in his grill that just completely ignores your comment and oh. yeah, you oh, you just yeah, you have this deep feeling of insecurity kind of take root and oh, no. you mark an insecure condition. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Morgan's like, Oh, but he doesn't look like a cactus. <laughs> <laughs> the three minions had been looting the jewellery store and are, are looking over, being like, what's our boss doing now? What kind of silly thing is he doing now? And are starting to walk towards this commotion. So there is one uh, woman with a broken bottle. There's a person with a lasso. And there is a man with a cast iron frying pan. Goodness. He really kept the best with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we've just had a look at the team mechanics and it looks like we're going into this particular battle with five team in the pool. And as a reminder, you can uh, use it to give plus one to a teammate on their roll or you can mm -hmm. spend it to act selfishly and shift one label up and one label down. As the Green Needle has been drawn into this combat... Uh, it is now open for Zenith or anyone else to take a hit. Minnie's gonna, having seen how cool Morgan looks, just like punching everyone, uh, Minnie's gonna give it a shot. And so, tiny, brightly hair-coloured human lady running down to Cactus person. But of course, uh, she does have powers of density shifting. And so when she runs towards and uh, attempts to just like punch him in the face, her hand and fist surprisingly like concrete <laughs> or at least that is the aim I suppose we will roll to see if that works now GM is that an unleash your powers because I'm using powers to make fist hard or is that a directly engaged threat I believe it's a directly engaged threat because it's pretty <laughs> punchy pretty pretty direct cool okay so that's plus naught but I rolled a six and a two so that is an eight so I think Punchy McPunch lands. So yes, you have landed an absolutely impressive punch on this on this cactus man. Oh, right on the noggin. Right on the noggin, yeah. And he turns around and is like, Well, where did that come from? <laughs> Freaking heck! He can't even swear pro properly, he's such a bad supervillain. Uh, and so what do we want to happen next? I will definitely say that the Green Needle is insecure at this point, so... 
Oh. I mean, so's Morgan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Morgan's not feeling great right now. <laughs> she tried something new and it didn't work. Uh, what's going on with these other three minions? They are now having seen their leader be punched. They are dashing up towards you cool. with their various weapons. Zenith kind of seeing uh, like all three of the other uh, of his other teammates kind of converge on this guy. I know Adib hasn't actually attacked him yet, but came out and, and drew him in. So I kind of imagining the three of them like kind of around him a little bit at the moment. So that's going to again kind of tear his focus away from the sort of supervillain and kind of like and then resign himself to going for the minions. Aww. Again, there is this thing in his head of just like I was meant to take out the supervillain that's what you do okay i will kind of rush past these guys and leave them with the uh, dealing with the big bad and i will from my non-trademark breaking utility belt um mm -hmm. i will take my kusari gama so the sort of sickle hook with the long chain and the weight on the other end and i'm gonna spin that out and go for like less kind of directly attacking one of these three people but I'm, I'm effectively trying to start swinging it in like out in arcs so that they can't get past me to to, to, mm. to deal with the other guys that's my plan nice. so I will roll plus freak see how we do that's a seven just nice oof that was very close. <laughs> yes, so you can either mark in condition or the effect is unstable or temporary. So um, yeah, then I will now. I'm angry. This is this is. I'm taking the angry condition now. Like I fell out of a ceiling. I got hit with a shovel, and now I'm I'm the guy who has to deal with the the mooks. And I'm like I'm. My whole life has been training to do this, and my first my first time out in like a team with other people. And this is this is what I am. So so yeah. No. Joseph's upset. Oh, um, so no. I, so so it works, but I'm pierced. Fair, cool. So yeah, these minions are being held back by this swinging chain with the weight at the end of it, leaving a deep mini and Morgan to deal with the green needle, who is just angrily barking at you all. <laughs> In a in a in it is is very much a small dog thinking it's a big dog situation mm. with this guy. Uh, I am going to roll my <laughs> ribbons into uh, gloves and Ooh. start punching him. Excellent. Yeah. Please directly engage. Six total. You unfortunately that's a miss. So I'm going to say that as you swing to punch him, he gives you a right hook right back. So please take the afraid condition. Okay. Can I, after the roll, give Adib a plus one to try to punch? Because if I gave him a team point, he would succeed, right? Yes. Yes, that is correct. And I, can I do that after he's rolled? Is that allowed? According to the description, yes. Because what I have in mind is Morgan might just like try and hold cactus man in place so that Adib's punches land. Amazing, yeah. And she won't be sapping powers because he's got that awful outfit on so she won't be touching skin. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, yeah. You can absolutely do that. So yeah, take away that condition, Adib. You're, you're, you're not afraid anymore. You're totally punching this guy. You're being backed up by your teammate. Safe in the arms. Of your <laughs> She's really strong. Mork is going to try again at a pun. I don't, like, just shouting, D cactuses don't move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, can you please be holding his arms out like, out <laughs> like a cactus? <laughs> <laughs> this is how they stand. <laughs> All right, so that means that I succeed, so I will use my, to choose, uh, create an opportunity to, uh, for mini to get in her punch. Minnie is going to... Well, he's already angry, isn't he? Um, yes. So I've also just realized that Minnie can fly. Um, yeah. Because that's just written there. It says you can fly and you get two of the following. So that's cool. I had just been playing with the levity, le levitation stuff. Um, but anyway, Minnie is going to like hover in front of him, of Cactus Man, like hyped up, heckin' hyped. <laughs> so hyped that the hair is changing colour a bit, the eyes are beginning to glow and say you need to stop being mean <laughs> and shoots light in his in his face um, 
quite scary is the is the intention so that's a that's an unleash powers is the is the in, is the intention perfect yeah yeah please give me an unleash your powers roll plus freak i rolled uh nine and then that's uh plus one so that's a ten perfect yeah it works perfectly this dude is now completely and utterly terrified he's still being held by morgan and he's just like right okay okay Fine, I'll, 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 I'll stop being mean, okay? <laughs> you've, you've done it, you've caught me, all right? I'll tell you whatever you want. And he tries to gesture to the minions, but Morgan's holding his arm really tightly. He's just like, yeah, just stand down, all right? Everyone stand down. They've, they've got us. It's a fair cop. It's a fair cop, Gov. And on this fair <laughs> cop, I'm going to say that we're ending the episode there. Thank you so much Aye! for listening to Chapter and Multiverse. And I would now like to ask our fabulous players where we can find them on the internet, starting with Lowry. You can find me at Lowry Tweets, uh, where I sometimes tweet. <laughs> <laughs> and Ahmed. Hi, you can find me everywhere at Mr. Jabri. Fabulous. And Lydia. Uh, I am at Lid Nicholas and at Urban Chooks on Twitter and other places. Nice. And Pip. Uh, hello. I don't know why I always say hello. Um, uh, you can, <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. You can find me uh, at Pip underscore Gladwin on Twitter. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the only place you will not find me anywhere else. You will never find me. <laughs> <laughs> much like Zenith, you will never find Pip. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Maddie underscore Abstract. And you can find links to all the various things that I do. And we hope to see you next time on Chapter Multiverse. But until then, from all of us here in the Space Between Worlds, goodbye. 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 Chapter and Multiverse is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. It is directed by Maddie Searle and produced by Natasha Johnston with executive producers Alexander J. Newell and April Sumner. The Eternal Tavern Keeper was played by Kareem Cronfrey. This episode was edited by Tessa Vroom and Maddie Searle, with music by Nikova Teze. Thank you for listening.